Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Sana Makbul, with you at PTB World. In today's show, we will be taking a look at the recent developments of, of course, uh, the aim of political negotiations uh, with, of course, uh, the election date being the single point agenda. The talks, uh, what is being uh, spoken about as the final round of these talks has begun a short while ago at the Parliament House. And it's important, of course, to be able to understand what is really going on. This is the third session and is apparently going to be the final round of talks between the government and the PTI and it's important in terms of uh, what the PTI chairman has spoken about in terms of his deadline or ultimatum of May 14th as uh, the date before which the assemblies need to be dissolved and then only can the PTI move forward with uh, elections on the simultaneous date. This of course has been rejected by the coalition partners and the ruling alliance that, that have termed it as impractical and have said that this is not something uh, that is acceptable or possible, something that was reiterated by the Interior Minister as well, uh, where he said that elections on May 14th are not possible. There is also, of course, uh, the issue of the budget being presented, which the ruling alliance, of course, is talking about in terms of how uh, the deal with the IMF needs to be finalized, as well as the budget needs to be presented by the current political setup, after which the elections can take place. Again, something which is unacceptable to the PTI, claiming that the uh, weight needs to be then carried by whoever is going to be elected later and so uh, they want the assemblies to be dissolved earlier and uh, the budget not to be presented by the current setup. There is of course a lot of confusion as to what really is going to happen as the outcome of these talks uh, because the stances coming in from both the sides are very strong. However, uh, they still remain hopeful and uh, they of course talk about how uh, it's important for the progress of the country to be able to move forward with a consensus on the elections but it seems that perhaps it's uh, there's a lot of doubt with regards to the success of the talks that have been that has been spoken out rightly by the leaders on both the sides as well but of course it remains to be seen what really is going to happen at the same time the Supreme Court also resumed hearing with regards uh, to the Supreme Court's procedures bill and this is important in terms of uh, the powers of the CJP we know that there has been a stay order that the court has issued in this regard and there is a lot in terms of the judiciary and the Parliament that we have seen in the recent months as well develop. Uh, the CJP today also remarked about how uh, the decision of the benches is only being spoken about in terms of uh, the desired outcomes and that is not something that is going to happen. He spoke about the jurisdiction of the judiciary and how this is upon the courts to be able to uh, move any sort of uh, decision with regards to the Supreme Court and um, this is of course important in light of the Constitution and the role that the judiciary has played particularly the CJP's powers. So we will be taking a look at all of these issues and of course try and understand them more. For this and of course our discussion with regards to what is going to be now the future with regards to the kind of chaos and uncertainty that we've been seeing for, for quite some time now. We've been joined of course in the studios by senior analyst Farooq Patafi as always and we've also been joined in the studios by Rana Makbul Ahmed who's editor PMLN. We've also been joined online by Barrister Shabir Shah, Advocate Supreme Court of Pakistan and Mr. Muhammad Adil Chatta who's also a legal expert. Thank you very much gentlemen for being a part of the discussion today. Let me start with you Rana Saab. The, uh, scenario with regards to the political uh, negotiations and uh, the uh, the consensus that ke keeps on evading us is something uh, that we have seen uh, being spoken about a lot in the past few days and differing statements coming in from leaders of the PTI and the ruling alliance as well. Everybody talks about uh, coming to the negotiating table with an open mind but it seems that the kind of rhetoric that is being used uh, and the way that things are going forward that there's not much hope for a success. Would you agree with that or do you think that uh, we will be seeing at least something positive coming out of this final round of talk? Uh, thank you, Sima. <coughs> I'll first of all I'll talk about the deadline and the date of the elections. Yes. Uh, yesterday in his speech, uh, Imran Khan has uh, given an ultimatum uh, to the PDM. If you dissolve the National Assembly and other two, three assemblies before 14, I'll agree to the elections. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then we'll not be able to accept any of the demand of the PTM. So that was the, uh, in a way, a clear uh, announcement uh, by leader of the opposition. I think we be, it will be a, a great obstruction in today's uh, parlays which they are holding. And that will be just uh, passing on time. I don't think so they can uh, reach any decision. 
But as far as the real situation on ground is concerned, there are four factors which are responsible uh, for not allowing to hold the elections. Number one is census is to be completed after a few weeks. Number two, after the census uh, is completed, it would be following the uh, demarcation of the constituencies. It will take two, two three, uh, four months. And immediate issue is the budget. And along with budget, we have to uh, finalize our uh, dealing and transaction with IMF. So how can we go for elections? This is just not possible. So if at all elections are to be held, those will be held around uh, end of September <coughs> or beginning of October. So these can't commence before that. It, this is uh, absolutely clear. If they, uh, they, if they put their demand, and uh, that demand cannot be accepted. But they have one thing in mind. And you might have uh, listened to uh, former President Supreme Court Bar, Mr. Amanullah Kanzai, talking and uh, very, very emotionally charged speech he made about the plans. So that is also to be considered. What are the plans about the future of the Supreme Court? So uh, it's very unfortunate such things are there, and a very responsible person has dilated on these sensitive issues very openly before public, and it's uh, viral all over in the world. What are the plans? So how uh, the, the leader of opposition is maneuvering to get the two-third majority and give benefits to certain uh, respectable and honorable uh, judicial officers in the country. So this is very unfortunate. They should straightway adopt the process of democracy instead of being so uh, introvert and so chauvinistic about this. So I personally think uh, the things are in the melting pot and we can't ec expect miracles except for better sense for whales and uh, there is uh, some ro role of prudence and wisdom then I think they, they can uh, reach some uh, decision or some uh, commitment with each other, with one another about the elections. But in any case those cannot commence before end of September or October, mid-October. Right, absolutely. Um, and thank you for clarifying that as well, because it seems that there is a lot of confusion in terms of what sort of uh, stance uh, uh, the sides are sticking on, because of course we've seen in the past also announcements such as this coming from the PTI side, but then uh, the situation changing as well. And there's also, of course, talks of Plan B or another strategy that's already going to be put in place. But Farooq, when we take a look at the situation in terms of, of course, what is being said, uh, do you think that the situation can possibly be different on the negotiating table? And um, if we move forward, uh, from these positions that are being stated in public specifically with regards to uh, what is going to happen if uh, the talks fail um, then is that pointing towards a direction that uh, is going to be in any way good for the country uh, right uh, Sanand that is quite an uh, amazing question because at this moment it seems that uh, uh, PTI's demand is uh, reminiscent of uh, uh, what you call Schrodinger's cat uh, on one side, they are demanding that the elections be held on 14th of May. Uh, on the other side, there are two speakers of the dissolved assemb assemblies have approached uh, courts to uh, request or pray that those assemblies be restored. Right? So you, you want to have your cake and eat it too. Uh, mm -hmm. So th they'll keep on actually trying to get whatever they want. Uh, they won't get it uh, mo most assuredly. But uh, then, of course, this is about passing time and making sure that uh, the Chief Justice, who has been demanding uh, for quite some time that there should be some kind of negotiation, that there is some uh, uh, sound and fury just to satisfy the ego of the Chief, uh, Chief Justice of Pakistan. Uh, on the other side, you have seen another very interesting development today. When in Supreme Court, the Chief Justice actually arrived, uh, uh, and he was heading, uh, you know, uh, the eight-member bench. At that time, uh, uh, first of all, he began by actually um, uh, uh, his hearing by delivering a sermon, uh, which was like a filibuster, and it felt that today he wants to dominate the news. And 50 channels of Pakistan actually obliged, and the entire day, everybody has been talking about the Chief Justice, right? Uh, but on the other side, he has also fixed the, uh, the schedule 
for the uh, you know uh, summer session of the court. So there seems to be some kind of negotiation or some kind of offer uh, by the Supreme Court as well. Uh, remember that there are people who are saying that if you want to hold the election before the, its schedule, then you will, uh, the Chief Justice will have to resign. And initially we heard that he is going to leave the country and going to go for many months of, uh, uh, you know, vacation. But that hasn't happened. Now it seems that the new message is that we are going to be in recession, uh, we are going to be in recess. So you can hold the election and we won't be a problem. The only problem is the CJ actually retires on 16th of September and the uh, recess ends on 11th of September, right? Uh, but naturally it is a ruse. So it is also not going to placate anybody who is critical of this uh, Chief Justice of Pakistan. So in this situation, I think that we will keep on running around in circles because everybody has hardened their position. And interestingly, again, something very fascinating happened in today's hearing, Sana. Mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, you know, uh, all uh, other members of the bench, right, no one spoke a word. Uh, there, th and then there were only two uh, justices. Justice Na Nakwi and Justice Aisha, who were nodding their heads in support of whatever was being said. But we did not see any gesture coming from the other members. Hmm. So the question is, all these like-minded judge judges, are they still on the same page? Because last time there was a hearing regarding reconciliation. That day also we were told that, uh, you know, uh, the court will pass an order. That order is still awaited, right? Uh, and last time that happened was when there was not any consensus among the justices sitting in the bench. So this time the three people who are core of this, uh, you know, like-minded group, they don't seem to agree. Uh, something has shifted. I think that CJ also knows that uh, the jig is up. So he's just going to, uh, you know, pass time and we will keep on seeing all these posturings from all sides, but nothing will change. All right, let me also welcome in the discussion uh, Barrister Shabisha with reference to what uh, has happened particularly in the hearing today as well and where we stand in terms of uh, the parliament and the judiciary. It's important, of course, uh, to see how this case uh, is proceeding and who's taking a look at it. Earlier also there was discussion whether or not uh, the CJP-led bench is appropriate in terms of hearing this particular case, which of course talks about uh, powers that is going to then impact the CJP as well. Um, I'd like to take your opinion on that with regards to uh, the bench that is hearing this particular case, um, does that not uh, impact the decision making of this particular case and whether or not uh, there is any um, legal line that is being crossed at the moment? Shabisa, you will have to unmute yourself, we are unable to hear you. Thank you, thank you twice. I thank you first for taking me on your show and second time for being to unmute myself. Uh, Sana, the legal question before the Supreme Court is that the Honorable Supreme Court is examining the viris of a bill. So, so, so there are two, three things. Even if we not examine at the moment as to whether or not the law is constitutional or unconstitutional, the first the first point is whether any court, even if it is Supreme Court or the High Court, can examine the constitutionality of a bill. Do you hear me? Absolutely, so yes. Yes. All right. So, so, so the first legal question is, can a court examine the viris of a bill? The answer is, it's an open and shut case, no. The court cannot examine the virus of a bill because, first of all, it is the prerogative of the executive, which is the cabinet in this case, to propose a bill and the parliament then has to consider it. And then after that, the court has to take into account the virus of any law once the law is enacted. So there I would with respect submit that insofar as uh, these proceedings are concerned, I think it will have... Um, uh, not good consequences for future precedent as well. Now, examining the second aspect of the case, 
which is whether or not the court can pass an interim order suspending the operation of a law so let us assume that this was this was already an act of the parliament and it was not a bill even in that case can the court suspend the operation of a law is a legal question so far we have three judgments one which is expressly recognized in the order itself which is dr mubashir hasan case in other words nro ki case se 17 member bench judgment hai usse pehle choudhary ehtizaz essence judgment is there and before that dr liak liakat jatoi's case is there in all the three cases the supreme court has settled a principle of law that you cannot suspend you you cannot suspend operation of any law you cannot pass any interim order so there also this interim order which has suspended the operation of a bill not even a law on that account also with respect i humbly disagree that such power ought not have been exercised because this is new jurisprudence the third aspect of the matter is whether or not the honorable chief justice whose very powers uh, have been called into question through the proposed legislation uh, he should have been part of the bench or not now the answer is uh, the answer is twofold legally speaking it is still his prerogative to decide whether he would be part of the bench or not uh morally speaking or uh, speaking as to whether or not it is appropriate i think it would have been more appropriate if he would have formed a bench in which he was not part of that bench the fourth aspect of the matter which although i am not called upon to comment on but i think it is im extremely important to uh, shed light on is whether or not this law in itself if it was converted into as an act of the parliament is constitutional or not in my humble opinion in my study of the constitution this aspect of the law which seems to amend article 184 of the constitution which in itself is the original jurisdiction of the uh, of the supreme court now if the original jurisdiction of the supreme court is to be amended it must be amended through a constitutional amendment it cannot be amended through an ordinary law so there hypothetically speaking if everything was appropriately in place and even if 17 member bench of the supreme court sits to review this law i maintain my opinion that this law would be struck down right absolutely and and thank you barrister sir for uh, outlining in such detail what is going on but i want to then understand that if all of these aspects exist it seems that there are lots of question marks uh, with regards to this particular hearing who's even going to raise those questions and who can even proceed uh, with uh, anything against the court um, or how the parliament procedure is not accurate in terms of what is going on because then uh, of course there needs to be accountability at all grounds Yes, that is that's correct. Uh, I mean, um, you would have seen that in this case also, the Honorable Supreme Court, the eight-member bench, has issued notice to the Learned Attorney General, and all the parties are also put on notice. And eventually, the Supreme Court is going to decide the fate of this legislation, uh, whether or not the judgment uh, would be accepted by all. uh obviously uh is a separate question but uh at this point in time the supreme court is seized of, of examining the varies of a bill which i have pointed out um uh, is not appropriate because this has not happened in the past uh, the uh, hasba bill case uh, was uh, i maintain was separate it was not on the same uh, set of facts and circumstances which are which we have now at this point in time right um let me also bring in the conversation mr adil with regards to what is being discussed particularly in terms of uh, the legal grounds of this uh, hearing it's important of course how this proceeds because it's not only just about uh, this particular hearing or this bill even though it holds a real importance at the moment but it's also the larger questions that have been raised uh, with regards to the powers of the judiciary powers of the cjp uh, and then of course uh, rifts between uh, the judiciary as well and then with the parliament too in terms of uh, the way that the uh, 
political narratives and political parties have also impacted the courts and the decisions of the courts and how uh, the lines have been blurred between both these institutions. How do you look at the, the current hearing in terms of uh, what is going on at the political end as well and would you think that uh, one is impacting the other? Thank you very much, Sana. Sana, first of all, we will have to look at the way this bench was formed and heightening speed and the way uh, like minded judges were assembled on the same day and they heard the matter and they passed a short order, a long order, in which they uh, clearly wrote that the bill and the, even if, if, if it becomes an act of the parliament, will. Uh, no legal value for the time being and uh, went on with writing that uh, piece. So I think the first thing uh, we have to see is that if a law, there's uh, some legislation which is directly changing or altering the powers of the Chief Justice, can the Chief Justice himself sit on that bench? And uh, we know that the law has been clear since uh, time immemorial that no one can be a judge in his own case. So if the uh, law is challenging the powers of the Chief Justice or altering it or changing it, would it not be a matter of conflict of interest if the Chief Justice is then sitting on the very same bench and hearing the matter? And I think the few, uh, many of us lawyers have also questioned that even the future Chief Justices who are going to hold this position after Chief Justice Bandiyar, can even they sit on the bench because they also have inherent interest in the position of the Chief Justice? So would it not be, would it have not been wise to make a bench of the judges of the Supreme Court who are not going to become the Chief Justice in the ordinary course and let them hear the matter and let them decide the matter? Right, absolutely. And that, of course, uh, is important. Donna Saab, the situation in terms of uh, the uh, political consensus and negotiations that's going on is important also in light of uh, the Supreme Court's hearing as well and how the, where the parliament stands with regards to the um, order regarding the May, May 14th as the date of the elections and then how they want to proceed forward uh, with, of course, the Supreme Court's orders as well because uh, so far uh, there is refusal with regards to how uh, the uh, decision has been taken and moved forward. And there's, of course, questions being raised uh, regarding the credibility of the benches as well. In terms of uh, what Imran Khan has said about uh, the uh, possibility of moving the courts if uh, this is of course not uh, something uh, that that option is accepted by the ruling alliance, how exactly will then uh, the coalition partners proceed with regards to the court's orders or the relationship uh, with the judiciary considering the fact that it seems that uh, you uh, don't have any trust with the current benches? Uh, thank you, Sam Sana. Um, I may be allowed to comment on a few things uh, before I answer this question. Absolutely. He very surprisingly, the Honorable Chief Justice observed, all decisions by the Supreme Court should be accepted. The decisions which are genuine, based on facts, and are backed by legitimacy and legal justice, those will be accepted by the people. The decision like uh, Justice Munir gave, saying that uh, su successful revolt is the law creating fact, justifying Ayub Khan's revolution, so called revolution. And uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Justice uh, Anwar al Haq, when there was a split decision and then executing the Prime Minister, uh, three vis a vis four, it has never happened in the history of the world, in the history of judicial history and history of jurisprudence. So, uh, uh, Shah Hassan Khan giving power to a dictator for to amend the constitution for three years and then whatever role uh, Justice uh, Sakam Nassar has played, that is not secret from anybody. So, can the nation accept such decisions? We m first of all think over whether the decisions are of those quality, the verdicts are, uh, uh, are backed by such uh, veracity or uh, profundity of uh, justice or not. So it, it was a, a very amazing demand by the Honorable uh, Chief Justice. For that purpose, the Chief Justice and his colleagues, they have to be very punctilious and particular and devoted to the spirit of justice. 
that is causing a great uh, credibility vacuum vis-a-vis -vis the people, general people and the political parties. They must uh, bridge these gaps and try to repair the situation by their conduct and by their act. If they stick to their guns to support certain people out of the way, the decisions will not carry any weight in the eyes of people. Hmm. <coughs> then uh, they, 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 there was an order for asking the record of the National Assembly. I'm sure uh, honorable ju judges are aware of the fact that Article 69 of the Constitution doesn't allow any institution, including the Supreme Court, to ask for the record and uh, examine the record of the Parliament. That is against law, against the Constitution. So he shouldn't have asked this. More so, uh, Article 183, 184.3, amendment as it has been discussed already, it was in fitness of things. For a lot many years, the bars have been demanding. It was just supporting justice. It was an act against arbitrariness of an individual. It was demand for putting collective wisdom for the fixation of cases. So that this allegation that you are giving the cases to the same people time and again, that should have been removed, would have been removed. But they are not prepared to do this, unfortunately. And more so, which is more objectionable, is there any law in the whole of the world where a decision or a verdict cannot be appealed against? Hmm. What is this 184.3? When you hang a person, you disqualify a person for life, and you are not able to make an appeal. This is what the new law says. It's absolutely according to the tenets of justice, and they must uh, rethink about their views on uh, 183 as well. Now, uh, very optimistic uh, comment by Patafi Sahab. There would be holidays. I tell you, need be so, they'll all be there during holidays even. Yeah. Because they are so anxious to serve justice, yeah. they'll be there. They'll not be bothering about their comfort about the holidays. Review, as you have said, the solution to the problem. One option is there. Uh, of course, the jurists and the lawyers of the PDM will decide if the decision is against them. They Should they go uh, in review or not? Along with the prayer that all the four judges who were there who made comments and who gave a decision verdict <coughs> by rejecting that proposition ab initio, that it's not proper. This uh, so motto is not justifiable. You might have be, be, be remembering the, the verdict and the ruling of uh, Atramanalla, and he said so many things. Gap, uh, political gap, and what is this, unfortunately? And then one man rule, as uh, Justice uh, 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 Mansoor Ali Shah said. So these all, all these issues should be observed and taken up with seriousness by the Honorable Chief Justice. If he doesn't want to uh, uh, create more quagmire, hmm. and if he, if he wants to dispel this uh, doubt and, uh, and the reservation of the people about his overall role as a supervisor and as a boss, of the judiciary, then he should uh, come up with something different <coughs> than it is being de demonstrated nowadays. Right, absolutely. Um, Farooq, with regards to, of course, uh, the coalition partners <coughs> talking about uh, the consensus with regards to uh, the elections, it seems uh, that uh, there were proposals shared in the previous session, mm -hmm. and part of it also seemed uh, to, uh, there was there were hints uh, and reports coming in with regards to the PTI's return, possible return to the National Assembly, and that may be part of the agenda as well. Um, with the kind of rhetoric that we have seen and, and the way things are moving forward, do you think that that may be a possibility that can shift the uh, PTI chairman? stance of May 14th as <coughs> the ultimate deadline? Uh, right, uh, Sana, I think uh, that the uh, chairman uh, PTI is actually taking solace uh, uh, in the uh, judgment of the Supreme Court where 14th of May was de designated as the uh, date when Punjab and uh, only Punjab's elections are going to take place, right? Mm. Um, I think if that changes, uh, of course, his attitude will change also. They are demanding concessions but uh, my humble submission is that at this moment, it seems that nobody will be able to concede too much ground because the main demand is only date. And date is, is uh, there's a reason why date is an issue. Uh, you know, PDM thinks that the current uh, CJ 
will not be able to offer them justice and he will keep on influencing the electoral outcomes as well. Remember that most of the staff in the electoral process uh, comes from Lord Judiciary. And of course, uh, uh, the, these things or these biases have trickle down effect. So that can always impact. So the current or existing uh, government will not want to go into election under this Chief Justice. But uh, PTI's uh, supporters or advisors actually want exactly opposite to happen. Uh, elections be t being held within his tenure so that he can get one year extension or one of his uh, favorite ju uh, judges, particularly Ajaz uh, Saab actually gets uh, extension, uh, sorry, uh, gets appointed as the CJ and Kazi uh, Faizi is sent home packing, right? With that kind of situation, they can maneuver the Supreme Court for 10 years. So I don't think there's a lot to give away from either side. And I think it will be deadlocked. That's why I'm saying that all these pleasantries are for the optics, just to placate the ego of our Chief Justice, who seems to be actually seeking or looking for some kind of face saving. When he doesn't get it, he is going to keep on doing what he was doing. Today, I thought that it is the art of, uh, you know, self, uh, self harm that was on display because the CJ actually decided that he is going to be the centerpiece of whatever happens, right? I don't understand. I haven't seen another legal proceeding where there is a bench, um, a larger bench, but none of the justices are allowed to actually speak because they, are, they must have been told. And yet, there are only two justices who are nodding their heads in approval. One, because he is being defended by the Chief Justice. The other one, uh, because she is a woman, and I'm sure that our patriarchal system must be reminding her every five minutes that look how generous we are that you are sitting on this bench. So with that said, um, um, earlier, Rana Saab was saying that uh, CJ might be actually serving some person. I tell you, who is he serving? I think the only thing he's serving right now is personal vendetta mm -hmm. and, you know, personal politics, nothing beyond that. Because his issue is with the set of justices that don't agree with him and he wants to carry out a purge. And that's why this whole thing keeps on going. Uh, I mean, come on, uh, but is it really about election date? Is it really about uh, the law that has been actually passed by the, uh, you know, uh, the parliament of Pakistan? No, it is essentially about what you want to do. Uh, I keep on saying that CJ actually appropriated a national, uh, you know, crisis just to actually find solace in his own politics. And this is exactly what keeps on happening. Regarding one thing that was said, I think that when the CJ fails, for two years to hold any kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 entire bench together to ensure that there are rules which are updated, uh, the parliament can then actually amend some rules or structure some rules. That is what has happened. I don't think that it was about curtailment of the uh, powers of Supreme Court. Finally, there are leaks that keep on coming. And we have heard what kind of politics is being played. Uh, Sagib Nassar's son on tape actually acknowledging that he is going to get his cut from t allotment of ticket. Then we see that Sagib Nassar is connected to Khaja Tariq Rahim. And through that, they are connected to the Supreme Court. So mm. all this thing seems to be either in aid of money or then personal vendetta. And you are actually playing f fiddle with the entire country. And you are actually playing dice with the entire country's future just because you cannot contain your egos. Right, absolutely. Um, Barrister Saab, uh, with regards to what uh, the PDI chairman is referring to, as Farooq said, uh, the Supreme Court's orders uh, of uh, May 14th being the deadline, I want to understand uh, what is going to be made of that particular uh, date with regards to the Supreme Court's directions, because it seems um, uh, as of now, we know that the parliamentarians, of course, have refused it. There have been resolutions passed. The Prime Minister has refused it. Uh, there is, of course, uh, also the issue of the funding, which has also been rejected. And uh, everybody 
majority in the ruling alliance is claiming that the elections of course are not possible in the May 14th and they seem unlikely as well. Uh, so what is then the current standing of the Supreme Court's orders of May 14th? Tana, uh, before I answer you, allow me to, with respect, disagree with some of the comments which were made earlier in your program uh, by your um, honorable guests. Uh, and with respect, may I, may I state, it is one thing to disagree with the judgment and putting forward your legal analysis, but it is completely another to attack or make personal attacks on the Honorable Chief Justice or any judge. I mean, uh, constitutionally, we are obliged, we are obligated to respect each and every judge of the Honorable High Court or the Supreme Court or even the lower courts for that matter. It is, it is straightforward, it is a contempt of court, it is contemptuous. And if we were in uh, previous days, uh, I would not be in a position to even defend such remarks. I mean, that is so much uh, uh, for that, and uh, forgive me for being honest, but this is my legal mm -hmm. opinion also. Uh, uh, sorry. Respond to, yes. uh, uh, because you were commenting to what I, I was saying earlier, sir, regarding constitution, of course, uh, constitution has somehow become the come and go room. It comes uh, whenever it is required by certain powerful or privileged people. It is not there when it is, uh, you know, it serves the common man on the street like me. But regarding what you are just saying, uh, with due respect, I have clearly stated on this program that I am open to the idea of being summoned in contempt of court if I am saying something wrong. Just prove it. Call me. Punish me. I am okay with that. But sir, don't become the moral police. Please do go ahead and comment on what was being asked, sir. With respect, may I, I mean, I didn't get the opportunity to hear your comments, but if what I make out of it is that fair enough, everybody has freedom of expression. But uh, uh, it, commenting on the uh, the constitutional respect which the constitution uh, mandates for the supreme court and the judges we must all be wary of that we must all show respect because you see sir it's not about today it is about hundreds and hundreds of years to come you and i might not be here pakistan is like a ship the state is always going to stay there the constitution is always going to stay there so let us not think about today or tomorrow or this government. Let's think about the rule of law. Now, imagine tomorrow also, the rule of law, what kind of rule of law would we want to live in? We would want to live in a rule of law where there is a court, there is an independent court. Barrister, sir, you are preaching to the choir. You, I think that this is for the first time that you have watched this program or at least my submission. Otherwise, you would have known that I, in principle, I agree with that. But my humble submission is that contempt, you know, is not actually something that is done willingly. It can happen accidentally also. And when it comes from the, uh, the court itself, then do we not even have the right to actually point it out that there is a contradiction that is going on? Right now, it seems that the way the honorable court has conducted itself over past four months, and yet then I have to actually uh, behave as if there is a religion and I have to actually, if God forbid I am going to comment on something, it becomes blasphemy, I'm sorry. I'm not going to actually concede that. Uh, but, but I do agree in the long run we need structure, we need respect for institutions, but that also cut both ways. When the Supreme Court asks uh, the Speaker of National Assembly to provide the minutes of the proceedings, then I think that it is not no more about respect or contempt. It is about power politics, which is going on. All right. Barrister Sab, you may respond to that and then please quickly also answer my question. Me, yes, carry on. We are not expressing clearly. You are old enough. You cannot be schooled at this age. I, may, I, 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 I say that maybe you would not have understood me correctly. But having said that, I move on. To another aspect, Sana, through your program, may I share, I've written an article on exactly commenting on this scenario, which is that the Supreme Court is going to save the Supreme Court. That is the only last resort. It was published in the news uh, last week. Uh, the, 
the worrying aspect is the state of the judiciary at this point in time. You see, the common man, rightly or wrongly, thinks that there are two Supreme Courts, one which is pro-CJP and the other which is anti-CJP. Right, absolutely, and I understand your point, but Barrister Saab, I, I quickly also have to go to Mr. Adil before we conclude the show. And Adil Saab, I'll take the question regarding the Supreme Court's May 14th order to you. Where does it stand at the moment, and how will it stand further if the talks fail with regards to the Parliament refusing uh, that the elections are, of course, not possible on the May or for, on May 14th, and previously as well, uh, the directions by the Supreme Court, of course, have been rejected. While we were back in the law school, I read a case where uh, in the England, a matter went up to the appellate court. And appellate co up the appellate court observed regarding the trial court that the Honorable Court, in its haste to do justice, did not do justice according to the law. So I think uh, this gives much uh, lesson to all of us, the courts, the lawyers, and the judges as well, that in, the, in their haste to do justice, they should also consider the constitution and the law. Uh, Rana Sahib, you wanted to add something. My solution is I'll take uh, only two seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, Barrister Sahib was very upset over the comments. Uh, if uh, you look at the honorable judges, Barrister Sahib, if there is a Hamoud Rahman standing vis-a-vis -vis today's, what do, what do you say about that? If Saqib Nisar is standing vis-a-vis uh, Justice uh, Cornelius, what would you say? If uh, other one, uh, Shah Hassan Khan, is standing uh, with a vi Nasr Mulk and Ajmal Mia, what do you say that? You compel the people to think on these lines for God's sake. Absolutely. If, 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 the, the, if the national interest and the integrity and solidarity is compromised, why shouldn't the citizen cry? Right, it pains me to say that. Point taken, Rana Saab. Thank you very much, uh, Rana Saab, for joining us. Thank you, of course, uh, to Barrister Shabir and Mr. Adil Chetta for joining us. And, of course, Farooq for being part of the show. As always, that's all that we have time for. Of course, there's much to debate about further as well. But we hope uh, that whatever happens uh, with regards to the final round of talks and what we see in the future is good for the country. And that is the priority of the people who are making the decisions. That's all that we have from the debate. See you tomorrow.